Hello everyone, Helen here. How are you doing? I do hope you're okay and despite all the, the grim news that we're having to hear that you're able to find calm and peaceful times in the days uh, because yeah that, that's all we can do really. Uh, reading the comments on last week's podcast that I did about gratitude was the very valid point that um, that we can sometimes actually start to feel guilty that we have so much to be grateful for, uh, and that yeah that's that's true we we can we can feel a bit guilty when we know there are other people in absolutely terrible situations and especially at the moment. Uh, but I think probably I think I, I think of it in terms of that caring thing that to be able to care for other people we do need to care for ourselves first and yeah if we, if we don't look after ourselves and our own mental physical health then we're in no position to really uh, be of use to to other people um and so yeah and so i think showing gratitude and writing down the things that we're grateful for just telling people that we're grateful for them uh, is a very good way of caring for ourselves. So, but anyway, I, I hope that um, for a little time while you're sitting here, keeping me company, uh, that we can, yeah, so think of some other things just for the moment. And today I am going to chat about uh, three finished projects. I'm going to show you those and also my exciting visit uh, that I did to this week to or a few days ago um, to a yarn shop oh, so, so lovely and I think we'll have a little bit of uh, stretch of our legs out in nature a bit later on as well <laughs> so right then so to finished projects so the first finished just a small project was um, this pair of socks, which I think I told you I would knitted one the last time I chatted about projects. And these are, this is the second time I've made the Choose Your House socks, which is a pattern by Kay Jones that I bought. And lovely squishy feel to that pattern there. Uh, the, and it's the first time, it's the first pattern I've used that is for to use DK yarn. And at the moment, I'm just use, trying to use up various uh, leftovers, but especially to Stylecraft Special DK. And this time, before I started knitting, I actually weighed the two colours that I was using and then weighed them when I'd finished so I could find out exactly how much yarn I'd used. And it turns out that I used... Uh, I use of the main colour, have a look down here, 45 grams of the main colour and then about 21 grams of the contrast. So that's useful now so if I, next time I choose a couple of colours I can go and weigh them first to make sure I've got enough. Uh, they're knitted on 3.25 millimetre needles and this is the medium size that comes in the pattern so you cast on 48 stitches uh, for the cuff. Um, and yeah, it's a very easy pattern to follow and I'm quite pleased with those. So now that I've shown you them, I can start wearing them and see what it's actually like to wear DK socks, um, you know, 100% acrylic. Uh, uh, hopefully they will be nice and cosy. So yeah, that's my socks. So my second finished project is my March Gnome. So I'm doing the Year of Gnomes, as I've told you a couple of times already. And I have now just finished the March Gnome. So here he is. I decided to use the yarn which I had won from after taking part in Angela of the Yarn and Yarns uh, podcast. Uh, her Gnome Along uh, last September, I think it was. So I was lucky enough to be... For my name to come out of the hat and I won these lovely Cartreff yarns and I thought it was just going to be perfect for March because I have this green in it 
So when I think of March, one of the things I think is, of course, it's got St. Patrick's Day in it. And so I thought uh, a St. Patrick's Day gnome would be really good. So of course I pulled in Patrick. <laughs> I decided to use, um, to do a little bit of a colour work with the contrast because that dark grey, dark greyish colour, I think it's dark grey, contrasts very nicely with the green. It's beautiful yarn for a gnome, perfect for a gnome. You can see that it's, it's got all different shades of green in it. That green, it's really nice. Uh, the only yarn that's not uh, from the ones that I won was, is the beard, because I wanted him to have a ginger beard. And uh, and then, and then I had a go at knitting a tiny little shamrock to stick on his hat uh, without success. Uh, so uh, so I just decided to cut one out of felt and then I decided to cut a bigger one out and embroider the month on it, March there. So I think you can just about see it says March. I'm not a great embroiderer, I'm really not. Uh, but anyway, so, so there he is and I'm really, really pleased with him. So yeah, you can go and, you can go and sit with these friends, January and February gnomes. Uh, yeah, so uh, the third project that I'm going to chat about today is this suitcase. Mouse in a suitcase project. Um, a project by, I think the designer was called Laura Loves Crochet. I bought the pattern on Etsy. I think you can buy it on the Ravelry as well. Um, and I showed you a few weeks ago that I'd done the cute little mouse that, that is part of the set. And then I just kind of set it aside and didn't do any more. And it is definitely one of those projects that you could just leave and not finish for absolutely ages. And that was partly because uh, there was something new that I had to learn. And that can just be a little bit of a barrier to, you know, to you getting on with something. So it involved using this plastic canvas um, so that you can make the um, sides of the suit, or so that make the whole suitcase nice and um, firm and keeping its shape so it's not all floppy. Anyway, I did get round to doing it and uh, I, I took some video of the whole process just in case you are thinking that you might like to make something like this, that it's actually nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> you just have to get on with it. So once I've knitted the pieces for the uh, suitcase. Uh, I you then cut the pieces of plastic canvas to size, and uh, so and that was fairly straightforward. No, not really a problem. It's, it cuts easily, and just laid it against the pieces. And uh, I think the only thing that I had to watch out for was that when I was putting together the side of the suitcase that's got pockets in it. So there's a pocket on the outside, pocket on the inside. I had to make sure they were the right way up so that when the suitcase was opening, the pocket on the inside wouldn't be upside down. Yeah, so I just had to take a little bit of care uh, with that. And then, so first of all, you do the large side and slot it inside. And the pattern does say that you should, you crochet it, crochet the pieces together. Um, but I started doing that and found it so tricky that I decided just to sew it. And it's just as effective. I think probably the pattern designer is a much better crocheter than me. Um, uh, so anyway, I, so I sewed round that. And then you have to cut, cut the sides, cut the narrow sides, two long sides and two short sides. First of all, you have to sew them together so that you end up with four pieces or attached to each other and they then slot down into the uh, sides of the suitcase, the crochet between the two layers of the outer and inner suitcase. And, and again, the pattern said you then crochet with slip stitch around the edge and I just sewed it, which works perfectly well if you just find the crocheting a bit tricky. Uh, and then after that, all I had to do after that was to put the two sides of the suitcase together and sew up one side the hinge. Again, making sure that when it was going to open, the pockets would be the right way up. Um, 
and 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 there it was so I just had some finishing off things to do I had to attach the handles and I had to put some buttons on for the for the little loops that go over the buttons to keep it all closed and yeah made some little luggage labels on the side there but I actually I've made a little video to show you of me opening this and showing you all the features of this little set so let's have a look at that now so here's the completed suitcase with the mouse in it got the travel labels on the side the Eiffel Tower I love New York and then a pocket on the back I'll show you what's in the pocket in a minute. So we'll undo the suitcase. Oops. There we go. And open it up. And inside we have the cutest little mouse tucked up in bed. So there's a little blanket here with granny stitch. And I added the board around the edge because I just thought it finished it off nicely. So that's the blanket. And here is the little mouse. So adorable. Wearing a fetching little green t-shirt. So I have a pillow there as well. A mouse view for there. And there's a little teddy bear. Little teddy there. Can go down there. A little bit of cheese in case it gets hungry. Focus on the cheese. There we go. And so what else have we got? Well, in the pocket over here, we've got a little dress. I added this little heart button as a decoration. We've got the fastening at the back. So let's see what the mouse looks like in this little dress. Oops. Off the t-shirt. Put your little dress on, eh? And yeah, there we go. A little arm through there and through there. Do your button up at the back. So there we go. Beautiful little dress with a frilly edging. Very smart. But when it's time for bed, or time for your bath even, you can change out of your dress. Dress down there, whoops. Dress down there and you can put on your bathrobe. So here we have the cutest little bathrobe. It's even got little uh, places where you put the belt into. And... So let's put your bathrobe on. There we go. And let's get the other arm in. Are you going to come through? There we go. I'll keep you decent and tie your belt. There we go. And just so that the little mouse doesn't get cold feet. Just to finish off the outfit, we have here the cutest pair of little slippers. Little slippers there, look at them. So let's put those on you as well, because they do actually fit on the mouse's feet. Oops. Get the other one on. There we go, all ready for bath time and bedtime. Look at that, little slippers. Gorgeous. So let's take your slippers off. And we'll tuck you back up in bed with your teddy. Just tuck that away in the pocket. Tuck this away as well. A bit of cheese in your blanket. There we go. Good night, mouse. So, took a while to make. I was a bit fiddly at times, but worth it. 
that really, really lovely little play set. So I think that's just going to make a really, really lovely little play set, if I can bear to part with it, that is. But um, yeah, so I, I can recommend the pattern. It was very, very easy to follow, very clearly set out, lots of photos. Um, yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it. So, OK, then. So my exciting day out last a few days ago, last week, I went... Well, a friend, a lovely friend, uh, got in touch with me and said that she fancied going to uh, Lucy Locket Land, which is a yarn shop that I've only discovered recently, just this year, I think. I don't think I knew about it before. I did, and I didn't realise it was not too far from where I live. Um, and yes, yeah, so this lovely friend, also called Helen, uh, said that she was quite happy to go there um, in the car. So I don't drive and it's uh, it's somewhere where, which is uh, would be a little bit tricky for me to get to otherwise. Anyway, so off we went and I, I was extra excited, I guess, but not only because it's a yarn shop and of course that is a lovely place to go, but because the last time I was actually in any shop, um, never mind a yarn shop, was in September 2020. So... Well, a good 18 months ago um, when we were on holiday. Yeah, we actually managed to get a holiday between all of the restrictions of the lockdowns and all that sort of thing. There was a, a, a short time when actually, you know, people were able to get away and we went to the Shetland Islands. And um, yeah, there is one of my early podcasts is talking about my holiday in the Shetland Islands. Yeah, it was a fantastic time. And of course, when you're in the Shetland Islands, if you're a, 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 a at all keen on yarn, <laughs> you can't avoid going to a, a shop with yarn in it. So, yeah, so that's the last time I went to a yarn shop and any other shop at all, in fact. So, so we had such a lovely warm welcome when we got to the shop, Lucy Lockett Land, and met Lucy, who is not called Lucy Lockett, uh, but she is called Lucy. Uh, and she has just got the most beautiful shop and um, oh, I, I, honestly, we were there for absolutely ages just walking around and around. we walked around and around loads of times just looking at everything squishing yarn which you can't do when you're shopping online and so yes it was absolutely wonderful so of course I took a bit of video to show you what what there is in the shop so I'm going to show you that now and then I'll show you what I actually uh, bought.
lovely shop and uh, Lucy sells a lot of uh, kits, knitting kits, mostly knitting kits I think. I think yeah and some crochet ones in fact and she makes her own hand dyed yarn and uh, it's uh, it's it's just such a lovely place I will definitely be going back but you can also shop online so she has got a uh, an online shop um, as well so I'll leave a link in the description box in case you want to go and have a look all the beautiful things loads and loads of different sock patterns and toys I suppose that yeah and other things as well yeah You'll just have to go and have a look. Well, you've seen some of the things in the video. but uh, So I, I could have spent hundreds of pounds, but I had some cash with me that's been squirreled away for the last two years when I haven't been out in shops. So I took that with me and decided that that would be my uh, limit. So what did I buy then? <laughs> well, one of the things I knew I was going to buy was something that had been on my Christmas list, but which which didn't appear in my stocking, which was fine. Uh, and that was a kit for a gnome patterned hot water bottle cover. And so I, I just can't wait to start that. I haven't quite started it yet, but I am going to start it very soon. And you might remember, if you've got a good memory, you'll remember that actually I've got quite a few patterns for making hot water bottle colours. I've got a whole book of them but uh, yeah this one I just well you can see why it appealed to me and and I do actually need a new hot water bottle cover so it's not that I don't need one. My hot water bottle has got a cover on it, a woolly cover, n not a handmade one I think it's just a it was a gift somebody gave me that's like a machine made one but it's very very thin it doesn't really insulate the hot water bottle bottle very well at all um so i do need one <laughs> anyway even if i didn't i think i would have bought it yeah so i bought that i bought some i did buy some other yarn and uh, i have never before used scapey's stone washed but heard some of my youtube friends uh, saying how much they love it, especially especially uh, Jeanette from Crafty Clare Creations and I think Dawn uses it as well from Dawn's Days or The Woven Almanac, which as her crafty podcast is now is. Uh, and so I really, really wanted to um, get some. So I saw it there on sale in the shop there and I thought, right, I'm going to get some. So I just chose a few colours and uh, decided that I'm going to use that probably just to make some toys. Uh, yeah, so that was that was the yarn that I bought. I bought some, oh, I bought one roll of washi tape. I know I don't really need any more, but this is one I hadn't got. It's an Emma Ball one, and it just looks like the uh, kind of the edging of some knitting. Um, that's going to look really nice in my bullet journal when I, where I've got pages that are about the projects that I'm doing. Yeah, so I bought that and I bought some stickers as well, which I'll also use in the bullet journal. And and I bought, bought some lovely little postcards. Um, it's an artist that I've just, I think my daughter told me about her and I follow her on um, Instagram called Nettle and Twig. It's, it's gorgeous art. And in the Lucy Locketland shop, I saw that uh, there were some of the postcards from Nettle and Twig. And at least a couple of them will be going up on my craft room wall. I might find them a little frame to go in and put them up because they're so beautiful. Yeah, and then I did buy one or two other things, but they, they will be gifts for other people. So I'll not show you those. Um, so, yeah. Oh, it was so nice. Such a treat to go there. Okay, then. Enough of the yarn shop. So when... It, the last few times that I've kind of done a, done little videos about going outside, they've always had a bit of a theme. It's either been a, a specific walk that I've been on or it's been lots of rainy pictures or lots of frosty pictures. But I always end up with lots of little odds and ends of video that are just, they don't quite fit into anything, but they're still quite nice to, to see. So... I'm going to give you now a real hodgepodge of 
kind of odds and ends of little bits of video of that I've taken just when I've been out on my on my daily walks. So here we are. Let's pop outside for a bit. <laughs> for me to go now. So uh, I do hope that you can find time away from the news and uh, get, get creative or peacefully sit and uh, write or think or appreciate the view from the window. Yeah, just, just, yeah, take care of yourself and I will see you again very soon. Okay then. Bye.